Imagine a world where the air hums with the calls of megafauna, where dense forests give way to sprawling grasslands, and the glow of campfires flickers under a starlit sky. This is Earth, 300,000 years ago, a planet not ruled by one human species, but shared by many. They weren't just our ancestors, they were our rivals, our neighbors, our cousins, homo sapiens, our kind, stepped onto a stage already crowded with other humans. Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis, Homo floresiensis, Homo naledi, Neanderthals, and Denisovans. Each carved out a life in the wild, unforgiving landscapes of prehistory, battling for survival against nature and each other. Their stories are etched in fossils, tools, and DNA, whispering tales of resilience, ingenuity, and loss. Today, we'll walk in their footsteps, through the savannas, caves, and islands of a forgotten world, to uncover who they were, how they lived, and why they vanished. Buckle up, this is a saga millions of years in the making, and it's going to change how you see humanity. Picture a sun-scorched plain in East Africa, two million years ago. A group of figures moves purposefully across the grass, their silhouettes tall and lean, no longer swinging through trees like their ape ancestors. These are Homo erectus, the upright men, the first humans to stride confidently on two legs into new worlds. Their bodies are strikingly modern, long legs, shorter arms, torsos built for endurance. They're not just surviving, they're exploring, colonizing lands from South Africa's rolling hills to the humid forests of Java. Homo erectus was a pioneer, their brains averaging 950 cubic centimeters, about three quarters the size of ours, were sharp enough to craft tools that changed the game. Hand axes, choppers, and sharp flakes of stone became their arsenal, perfect for scavenging meat from carcasses left by predators, or later, hunting their own prey. I imagine a group of Homo erectus crouched around a kill, their stone tools glinting in the firelight as they slice through tough hide, sharing stories not with words, but with gestures and grunts. Evidence from South Africa's Wonderwork Cave hints they may have mastered fire a million years ago, a revolutionary leap that warmed their nights and cooked their food, making it easier to digest and fueling their growing brains. But what made Homo erectus so remarkable was their adaptability. They thrived in diverse environments, grasslands, woodlands, even coastal regions. Fossils from China, Spain, and Kenya show they weren't picky about where they settled, as long as there was food and shelter. Yet, their world wasn't static. Around 100,000 years ago, climate shifts began to reshape their habitats. The open woodlands they loved gave way to dense rainforests in places like Java, where their last known fossils, dated to 117 to 108,000 years ago, mark their end. Did they fail to adapt, or were they outcompeted by newcomers like us? My take? It was likely a mix of both. Homo erectus didn't just vanish, they laid the groundwork for every human species that followed including us. Their legacy is in our upright stance, our tool-making hands, and our wanderlust. Now, shift your gaze to a frostbitten Europe 700,000 years ago. Snow dusts the ground and the air bites at exposed skin. Here, Homo heidelbergensis emerges, a species built for the cold. Their stocky, wide bodies and shorter limbs conserved heat, a stark contrast to the lanky Homo erectus. With larger brow ridges and brains bigger than their predecessors, they were thinkers and doers, carving out lives in harsh climates from Eastern Africa to possibly South Asia. These humans were hunters, and not just any hunters, team players. Fossilized bones of rhinos, bears, and deer found alongside their tools show they took down big game with precision. I envision a hunting party moving silently through a forest, their bifacial hand axes and cleavers at the ready, coordinating with glances and signals to surround a massive hippopotamus. Their tools, refined from Homo erectus designs, were versatile, used not just for hunting, but for butchering and crafting. At Gesher Benot Yaakov in Israel, archaeologists found hearths, early fireplaces, suggesting they gathered around fires to cook, 
share meals, and perhaps forge bonds that strengthen their groups. Homo heidelbergensis is a bridge in our story. Scientists believe their European populations evolved into Neanderthals, while those in Africa gave rise to Homo sapiens. Their ability to thrive in cold climates hints at a resilience that shaped their descendants. But their fate is murky. Did they simply evolve, or did competition with other species play a role? My analysis, their adaptability to cold environments, set the stage for Neanderthal survival in Ice Age Europe. But their disappearance likely reflects a gradual transformation rather than a dramatic extinction. Let's sail to the remote island of Flores, Indonesia, a hundred thousand years ago. The sea stretches endlessly, isolating the speck of land where an extraordinary human species thrives, Homo floresiensis, the hobbits. Standing just three feet six inches tall, with brains the size of a grapefruit, they're a testament to evolution's creativity. Their small stature, a result of island dwarfism, help them survive on an island with scarce resources and few predators. Picture them darting through dense jungles, their large feet steady on uneven ground, hunting small elephants called stegodons. These hobbits were no pushovers. Archaeological digs at Liangbua Cave reveal stone tools and butchered stegodon bones, proof they were skilled hunters. They faced dangers, too. Giant Komodo dragons lurked, ready to snatch an unwary hobbit. Evidence of fire is debated, but I like to imagine them huddled around a small blaze, fending off the night's chill. Their ancestors, likely Homo erectus, crossed six miles of treacherous sea to reach Flores, hinting at a lost seafaring skill that boggles the mind. How did they build rafts or navigate currents? It's a mystery that sparks the imagination. Their end came around 60,000 years ago, just as Homo sapiens reached the region. Did our arrival spell their doom through competition for resources or direct conflict? I suspect Homo sapiens' larger brains and social complexity gave us an edge, overwhelming the hobbit's isolated world. Local legends from Flores Leo people speak of an ape-like Ebu Gogo, hinting that Homo floresiensis' memory lingered in folklore, a haunting echo of their existence. Deep in South Africa's Rising Star Cave, 300,000 years ago, a small-statured species navigates the darkness. Homo naledi, standing about four feet nine inches with brains a third the size of ours, defies expectations. Discovered in 2015, their fossils, over 1,550 specimens from 15 individuals, reveal a mix of primitive and modern traits. They walked upright like us, but were built for climbing their hands and feet gripping cave walls with ease. What sets Homo naledi apart is their potential for symbolic thought. Recent studies claim they used fire to light their caves and carved engravings on rock walls, a stunning leap for a species with such small brains. Imagine a Homo naledi individual holding a burning branch, etching lines into stone by flickering light, a spark of creativity that challenges our view of early human culture. A stone tool found near a buried individual suggests ritualistic behavior, perhaps an early form of burial. Their extinction, around the time Homo sapiens arrived in southern Africa, likely stemmed from competition. Homo sapiens' larger brains and advanced tools probably outmatched Homo naledi's simpler lifestyle. My take, their small size and arboreal skills couldn't compete with our adaptability, but their cave engravings hint at a shared human spark a desire to leave a mark that resonates across millennia. Now step into the frozen tundra of Europe 200,000 years ago. Neanderthals with their stocky builds and barrel-shaped chests are built for survival in brutal cold. Their brains, larger than ours, powered a complex life. They hunted mammoths, Reindeer and wild goats with stone-tipped spears supplemented their diet with roots and nuts 
and crafted tools for tanning hides and carving wood. Picture a Neanderthal family, wrapped in loose-fitting hides, gathered around a fire, sharpening spears under a moonlit sky. Neanderthals were more than brute survivors. They created art, ochre-smeared shells, carved bones, and cave paintings, showing a sense of beauty and meaning. A flute-like instrument from Slovenia, dated to 60,000 years ago, suggests they made music, though its authenticity is debated. Burial sites like Shanidar in Iraq reveal they honored their dead, placing bodies with care in shallow graves. These acts hint at a rich inner life, perhaps not so different from ours. Their extinction, around 30,000 years ago, is a puzzle. Climate change, competition with Homo sapiens, or interbreeding may have played roles. DNA evidence shows Neanderthals interbred with our ancestors, leaving 1-2% to of their genes in modern Europeans. I believe interbreeding diluted their population, while Homo sapiens' adaptability and numbers overwhelmed them. Their final holdouts in Gibraltar, surviving until 24,000 years ago, paint a picture of a resilient species clinging to a changing world. High in Siberia's Altai Mountains, 300,000 years ago, Denisovans carve out a life in Denisova Cave. Known mostly from DNA extracted from a juvenile female's finger bone, they're a ghostly presence in our story. They shared the cave with Neanderthals, sometimes overlapping, and interbred with both them and Homo sapiens. Their DNA, found in modern Melanesians and Aboriginal Australians, suggests they roamed across Asia, from Siberia to New Guinea. Denisovans crafted intricate tools, bone needles, animal tooth pendants, a stone bracelet, dated to 43,000 to 49,000 years ago. Imagine a Denisovan artisan, meticulously shaping a pendant, their dark eyes focused in the dim cave light. Their Neanderthal-like build and large molars hint at a rugged lifestyle, adapted to varied climates. A first-generation hybrid, Denny, with a Denisovan father and Neanderthal mother, shows how intertwined these species were. Their extinction around 50,000 years ago may have followed Homo sapiens' arrival. Interbreeding, competition, or disease could have erased them, though their genes live on in modern populations. My analysis, Denisovans' wide range and adaptability made them formidable, but Homo sapiens' technological and social edge likely tipped the scales. To bring this prehistoric world to life, consider modern parallels. In 2010, archaeologists in Flores interviewed Leo elders who shared tales of the Ibu Gogo, small ape-like beings who stole food and lived in caves until villagers drove them out centuries ago. Could these be memories of Homo floresiensis, preserved in oral tradition? Similarly, in Siberia, local Altai communities speak of ancient mountain people, possibly Denisovans, whose legends linger in cultural memory. Another story comes from the 2015 Rising Star Cave excavation. Lee Berger's team, navigating tight passages, uncovered Homo naledi's remains in a chamber so remote it suggested intentional burial. The divers, risking their lives in claustrophobic conditions, described a profound connection to these ancient beings, as if touching humanity's roots. These stories bridge the gap between us and our cousins, making their world feel vivid and real. As we close this journey through prehistory, one truth stands out. We are not alone in our humanity. Homo erectus, Heidelbergensis, Floresiensis, Naledi, Neanderthals, and Denisovans were not mere stepping stones to Homo sapiens. They were innovators, artists, and survivors, each shaping their world with tools, fire, and perhaps even stories. Their extinction through climate shifts, competition, or interbreeding reflects the fragility of survival. But their legacy lives in our DNA, our tools, and our capacity for wonder. The lesson? 
Embrace our shared humanity. Just as our ancient cousins faced a changing world, we face challenges today. Climate change, division, uncertainty. Their resilience reminds us to adapt, collaborate, and create, knowing that every mark we leave, like a cave engraving or a crafted tool, connects us to those who came before. Let's honor them by building a future that reflects the best of what it means to be human.